Um, my name is Joe Wykey and I'm a director of GIS for Cherokee County. Cherokee County is a little bit north of here and we're really interested in using an open street map within the county um, to tell you a little bit about the county. We're a developing county. We've got about 200,000 people living in 535 square miles and the, the southern end of the county is very um, developed. It's suburban. It's a uh, bedroom community for Atlanta, so people go out there and they buy houses in the suburbs and then they commute down to Atlanta to work. And in the northern end of the county, it's still very rural. So that gives us a, a kind of interesting set of challenges because we have to deal with people who, have an ex who might be more likely to be an open street map user in the southern end and people that would be less likely to be an OSM user in the northern end. And we also have um, developing f uh, facilities within the county because, you know, as you go out into the country and you get more rural, it's more and more you go into a, uh, a county office and it's just, you know, things are done more in a handshake and there would be less sophistication in terms of the computer systems that are available and the data that's available. So we're working on developing that within the county. Um, if OpenStreetMap had been, if I had known about OpenStreetMap five years ago, it probably would have played a much bigger role in the development of our mapping system. Um, one of the reasons that we like it is because it's going to give us a way to give data back to people. Um, a lot of the stuff that we do, one of the things that people talk about is that data wants to be free, and a lot of the work that we do is done with taxpayer dollars. So if we can share that data with someone, give that back to the community, we've view that as kind of a positive thing because we think it will help our county in a lot of different ways whether it's from development or just from the idea of fair play you know you pay your taxes now you get access back to the data that you paid to collect and um, <laughs> and another thing that, that I see it potentially doing is that it allows citizens to interact with the government because if you can if you can submit things on OpenStreetMap and I know that there are a lot of uh, portals that people have developed like for pothole reporting or for things like uh, crime incidents. We'd like to have a way for people to, to let us know about things that are problems and then integrate those things back into our system, uh, into um, our work systems. So, you know, one of the things that we'll probably be looking at will be things like pothole reporting, although we do have other mechanisms for doing that. So that's kind of like a little bit further down the line. Um, but another thing that would be interesting for us is to see what people think are important. Because a lot of times we go in and we're, we get a relatively small number of people that are telling us what they're interested in. So I might have a small group of people come into my office that are going to tell me things like, cemeteries are the most important thing. Well, a cemetery to me is a great application for OpenStreetMap because you do have people that go out there and they do grave rubbings and they also do things like going out and they're, they're uh, they're mapping these things because they want to get them protected. And one of the ways that I see that OpenStreetMap can possibly interact, and one of the reasons why I was at, really excited to see the Esri pre presentation, is because now we can hopefully give them a way to digitize those cemeteries, and then we can pick them up and work to help integrate them into our systems so that they can become better protected. And when I say protecting, all that means is that when we know about them. Because when it goes into the development process, a lot of times that you have like grave sites and things like that on small family plots, we really don't have any way of knowing about it until somebody tells us. And if somebody comes in and wants to develop that and put it in a subdivision, having knowledge of that cemetery could be a great asset to the planners and the, and the administrators that are considering those things. And I'm also looking at it as a way to promote ownership of facility. And the thing I'm going to talk about most is actually a mountain biking park called Blankets Creek because what I hope to do in 2011 is have an open street, kind of have a, um, a customized site developed for um, a few of our recreational facilities like the mountain biking park. The mountain biking park is a, it's a great thing because in this particular park it's a partnership between the government and the, and the local citizens groups but it's also a challenge because it's a mountain biking park. People go out there and they get hurt. They break their legs, they break their necks. And then you have a problem with getting them out, figuring out where they're at and how you can get to them the best way. So 
the Blankets Creek Mountain Biking Park is up 575 and you can get off at X11 and it's a partnership between the county and the Southern Off-Road Bicycle Association. It's called SORBA and the Woodstock chapter of SORBA actually um, develops the trails and does a lot of the trail work and collects donations that they use to improve the trails. The county leases the land from the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, it's, it's near Lake Alatoona. It's actually on Lake Alatoona. And we also provide a lot of the material support. So one of the things that's going to be going in soon are trail markers. So that way people can better tell where they're at. And the county, an example of that is the county is actually uh, purchasing the trail markers, but then you have volunteer labor from Sorba that will go out and install it. So this particular park, the reason I'm looking at this one is because as my best bet for using OSM to kind of bridge the gap between government and citizens is because it's got a group of volunteers, people that are really committed to doing this, uh, keeping this facility up and working with this facility. And you've also got people on the county side that are really interested in what's going on out there. And that, that's mainly the fire department because they want to know where those trails are going in at and how they can get people out. So as far as like the mapping of the park, you, this is a little bit hard to see, but this is a, a flyer that you can download off the Sorba site. And it, um, it basically shows the trails, gives you an idea of the difficulty and the length. And that's a great thing, but there's a few things missing. And whether or not they go on there is something that the board of directors for Sorba debates. And that is, what about the bailout points? Where can you get out if you're at the end of a trail and you just decide, you know what, I've got to chuck this thing and I've got to get out of here? Well, in that area, there are actually subdivisions, but they were un they're uncomfortable a little bit about putting up some of those access points because they, ha they have both arguments for and against it. Because on the one hand, they're, they're like, you know, we really should put these things up. But on the other hand, somebody might get mad because people are going to start traipsing through their backyard. Um, so we went out and we actually expended um, a fair amount of manpower and we GPSed most of the uh, facilities and then we tied it back in with a lot of our address data. And I'll switch over to a PDF of the map that we created to put in the fire trucks. And we actually documented a lot of the bailout points and we identified all the properties by address. It's not on this particular map because this one was done to be a little bit smaller and actually go on the vehicle and then we have bigger maps that are actually in the firehouses. Um, what I'd like to see happen in the way that I see the potential for us to use OpenStreetMap is if we can develop a customized site using the potlatch editor we can allow people to designate these sites because you know it's kind of like when I went to college I was talking to one of the planners on the college and I said, how do you decide where to put a sidewalk? And he said, that's easy. I don't put any sidewalks in. I wait till the people walk a mud hole through them and then I put a sidewalk in. <laughs> and that's the same kind of thing that you can see happening in, in the uh, mountain biking facilities. Um, there are some interesting challenges though with that because you kind of see that there's a, there's a pretty good tree canopy. So going out there with your iPhone, you're not likely to get a real good signal. Um, you can talk, there are online resources for um, mountain bikers. One of the most popular ones is one called Map My Ride, where you can um, take your iPhone or your, your smartphone or your Android, and you can actually turn it on and then go back and upload it and look in Google Earth and, and see where you went and how far you went and that kind of thing. It doesn't work as well in uh, Blankets Creek because the canopy just knocks out the uh, GPS signal, but there are a few people that have put things up with my, my ride. Sorry. But, um, screwing up my presentation but what we try to do with um,
Yeah. What we're what we're looking at uh, trying to do now with some of the re online resources, we want to try to emulate them because you know whether it's open mountain bike, which has actually been used in Germany, and we looked at that um, as kind of like a, an interesting model. But it involves a lot of things that we don't think we can get a lot of the sort of people to do. So we want to start and we want to focus on that core group. And we want to get a, um, a website developed that gives them ownership of it. Owner ownership of the facility, which they already have, but we want them to have ownership of the mapping products as well. So that's why we're looking to use OpenStreetMap in that. The benefit that the county gets out of that is as more and more people start to use this and they start to contribute more information, we're going to get more detailed information about what's going on out there and hopefully we can hand that back to the first responders. And then they'll be, when somebody does break their neck, they'll be able to say, hey, I'm near the, um, I passed, just uh, passed a log crossing and I'm on the Van, the Van Michael Trail. And then hopefully those first responders will know, well, the quickest way to get there is to get on a boat and go into Lake Alatoona and take that person out off the through the lake and on the boat. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I asked the question about downloading the data and the tiles before, because in our call center, you don't have ac they don't have access to the internet. So delivering some of this rich information that we get back, that people are uploading with OpenStreetMap, is one of the things that we can see as big, a big potential because one of the areas that we're really poor in data is say for example a business. If somebody, you could, you could have just gotten mugged in front of Denny's and um, <laughs> yeah and, and while, while you're walking from the park and if you call the call, our call center and told them I'm standing in front of Denny's on Highway 92 we might not know where that is because you know they probably have to go get a phone book and look in to see where it's at. Yes. I have this fantasy that when I call 911, E911 would means that my location pops up on a little map. Is that just a fantasy? Because I thought that was the whole point of E911. What if you're using a cell phone? Yeah. 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 Because you you think it's tri triangulating off the top the towers? Or the GPS in the phone. Well, that goes back to the idea of uh, developing a mobile application, but in Cherokee County, no, that's not going to happen. Um, the, uh, actual number, yeah. the actual number for that, if you're using the triangulation, 80% mm -hmm. need to be within 1,000 feet. So 80% gives you a lot of places where there's no data, and 1,000 foot could give you a place like Atlanta could give you more than one Denny's. Yeah. And, and I, I believe, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a walk one. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, and, that, and I, I do believe you, there are actually more things that you can do with uh, GPS. I think it's called Tier 2 for the, the GPS location um, on the Annie and Alley. That, isn't available in Cherokee County at this time. There's no phase. There's, there's no phase two. Oh uh, no. <laughs> there's no uh, the GPS in these things is not fully implemented in any in any single county in, in Georgia. There's partial implementations. Yeah. So yes. So you may get to this eventually. Stop me if you are. Um, what about liability issues if your E911 department is relying on volunteer geographic information and they go to the wrong place and somebody dies? That's why I want to download it and validate it. Um, I do want to respect all the OpenStreetMap community and the, the philosophy behind it because I agree with that strongly. But in regards to like the E911, I definitely want to validate that. And even in the, it, the instance of things like um, Blankets Creek, if we're seeing some if we're seeing a lot of people report a particular thing, or if we see something that we think may be fishy, I'll probably send somebody out there to look at it. Or I'll probably take a half day off work and go out myself, you know, just to as an excuse to get out of the office. But um but I, I definitely do want to use OpenStreetMap as a way to kind of introduce this data in because I think it's um, it's a way for the community to have these things, and I think we can also contribute data back to it. Do you, um, how, do you, how many of your vehicles 
have GPS tracking? Can you export that data and, and build an average center line? Um, no, none. We don't have, no, we've got like four GPS's in the entire county. And I happen to own all of them, so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I beg people to use them, but they, they refuse to quite a bit. Um, but what I do think that we have, we, we do have um, good accuracy with our aerial photographs because we've got, you know, six inch pixels. So our street center lines are pretty accurate because we were able to get that. Those are done when leave, with, under leaf off conditions. And we can, we can sketch in the street center lines pretty well. Yes. So during, but during your your validation and then surveying process, you're saying that that you and then hope encouraging others are going to re-contribute that data back, uh, that, that validated. So so let's say you get, you look for you find some data that you think is fishy. It turns out it is wrong. You, you went out and you surveyed it. You're you're going to you you are going to then upload it back to OSM and then you're going to encourage it. others. I, to do the same thing? If, I, if I've improved the data, I would definitely upload it. Um, as far as encouraging others, I've tried to, but there is a learning curve, and that's why I think we have to have customized applications built to, towards small citizen groups. Um, because I've tried to talk to people about OS, OSM and using the data, but uh, it, it doesn't really get too far just because, you know, you point them at OSM and they see the potlatch editor and they're turned off just because they feel like they're in over their head. Um, that's just been my experience. You know, you can take that for whatever it's worth. One of the things I think that would help benefit it, um, if you do get some bigger entity such as MapQuest using this, I think that would make a big difference because one of the areas that we do have issues with is, say, Google Maps or MapQuest sending people to the wrong spots. And that, that people, for some reason, think that I run MapQuest. Um, and they come into my office and yell at me for it. So, um, you know, a lot of the issues with, with reporting to, like, with Telenav and Teleatlas, you know, people will call up, up our office and use these things. So if you had OpenStreetMap become more prevalent where the point where, say, MapQuest uses that as their base map in the United States, that would be a huge benefit because a lot of people think it would basically give people an easier. I don't know if it would be any easier of a route to report discrepancies in the data, but I think it's a little. I feel better about giving that information to OpenStreetMap than I do giving it to Tele, Tele Atlas or any of the other commercial um, street it vendors. The turnaround would be so much quicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, and it, and it would because like that's the experience I have. We built a conference center and a new administrative building. And I had the commissioners come yelling at me because Google Maps was taking people to the wrong spot. It wouldn't take them to the, uh, the correct spot. So I was going in and checking on that almost daily to see when they finally got that updated. And it took them a couple weeks, I think, before Tele Atlas and, and NavTech um, eventually updated the data and it started showing up in some of the online routing systems. So maybe MapQuest could buy a fleet of uh, GPSs to you know, it's a great idea. Um, I just kind of doubt that it would fly with Buying the. Devices is the easy part. Yeah, yeah it, it's a question of training and convincing people to use it. And then um, once the, the data is collected, what, what happens? Well, yeah. You have to use some conflation tools to ban the tiger That's, data around. Your, your biggest issue, though, is going to be convincing people to use it. This might sound hard to believe, but just, um, you know, when, especially when you talk about, like, even a place like I'm in, which is a developing county, and once you go past us, you're really in the rural counties. Um, I don't think a lot of people would want to use it. They, they would come up with 5,000 reasons why it won't work. Uh, but that's just my opinion. But at any rate, um, some of the benefits that we kind of see coming out of this is, um, is, pro is promotional because we want people to use some of these facilities like our mountain bi biking parks. Um, we're putting in a new um, horseback riding uh, 
area called Garland Mountain, and we're going to try to partner with the Saddle Club in a similar way. If we can get this to work with the mountain bikers, our theory is that it's going to work with the, uh, the, horse, the trail riders as well. And it also helps us with those logistical things, just because trails are constantly changing. You know, they put in one trail, but then the trail starts to erode and burn out, so they have to shift it over. They have to move it someplace else to keep it from washing out. Or people make their own trails by just bush bashing. You know, they take off through the countryside, and I don't particularly like that, but at the same time, because, you know, like these facilities are managed for a reason, but at the same time, when we're trying to dispatch people to help them when they get hurt, it helps us to know where they're at, where these things run, or at least have an idea of where they're run, running. And, you know, I think it would be a big aid for communicating, for people to communicate with things like their fire department and their 911 facilities. And also, um, our vault, they, the one thing I did forget to mention about Blankets Creek, they do have a volunteer bike patrol. So that's an, a potential group that does meet and they do go through training. So that's a, a potential for us to meet with them and actually train them on how to use things like the open street map editors and, and try to use it. And the last thing is uh, something called a common operational picture. And if you talk to a firefighter or a police officer now, one of the big things that you, uh, and also you see ESRI doing now, promoting on their website, is, some, is a common operational picture. And that's the idea that whenever somebody responds to another, another area out of their jurisdiction, which happens quite often, that they can open up a map and it looks the same. Because this is a big deal. Be, you know, in the last year, we have two, her, um, I'm sorry, two tornadoes hit Cherokee County. And we brought in first responders from neighboring areas. We had a flood. And then we also had a large swath of damage. And we actually had damage last night um, from storms. So when you have to leverage these uh, people coming over from Gilmer County or from Fulton County, it really helps if they have a place where they can go and see something that, that they're used to seeing. Otherwise, they have trouble reading the map. They have trouble finding their way around. And that's one of the areas that I hope that we can see more, improve, more development with open street map is in developing in, in the common operational picture. One of the issues that we face in, in Georgia is we really um, have kind of a lack of statewide GIS, which I don't know if people would agree or disagree, but um, we, did, we have things like the Georgia GIS data clearinghouse to share data, but we don't have one spot where you can go like virtual Alabama. In Alabama, they actually have a website that covers the entire state. So if, a first, if, say, a county is devastated by flooding, then the first responders coming in to aid those people would have one place that they could go to find to help them get around and things like that. And hopefully we could start seeing a little bit more with that. But um, I think for us as a county, the biggest thing that we need to do is develop mobile applications and websites geared towards the specific groups and then also cult cultivate use among the specific groups like the mountain bikers. And then we also need to work on our own ability to um, deploy these sites quickly to the public where you give people a portal to put this information in and take some ownership of the data. Um, that's a big challenge for us because we have a really small staff and we don't have any development capability. So that's one of the things that we'll be looking at working on improving. And uh, to kind of get around that, we'll try to spend some money in 2011 to do this with you know blankets creek and hopefully i can go back and say look if you guys you know let me hire somebody that can do some web development we can do more stuff like this but uh i think that's about it question sure question okay so you know sorba would be adding in the trail so you know it is available online but how are you going to you know, what do you see the first responders having in order to get this information? Like, what are they looking at to see where their access points are? They would have to come back and use the maps that we provide for them. Like so, a like, book maybe, or well, right now, yeah. right now, what we do is we we've created maps in the responders that go to that area, and then we also that map that I had up a minute ago is actually a map that's in, on on each of the apparatus now. And um, 
and that's what they use. What I kind of look at, um, I guess I, let me go out to the full scale so you can see this a little bit better. So this is the actual map that's on the apparatus. And it has some of the things like the, the addresses and also the bailout points. When the trail markers go in, we'll place those on there. The difference is, though, I think that OpenStreetMap can help us as a prompt to know when some, some changes are occurring. And also, as I said, I want to promote ownership by the people that are running the facility because, you know, I could relatively spend a lot of money by sending people out to GPS this thing twice a year. You know, that might take me, um, take a week, a man hours or something like that. But I'm still not going to have an idea of where people are using it. So it, part of the issue of developing a website is we'd like to use it to promote the facility, so we'd like to let people do things like geotagged photos and things like that. Um, did I answer your question or did I dance around it? No, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's good to know. I mean, you, you answered the question like early on. I was just curious about what you were getting out to the first responders, because what I didn't understand was like, in dispatch, you're saying they don't have access to the internet, and I'm just wondering, you know, well, uh, I don't know. I, I that, mean, to me, I just like, what? That, 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 that becomes an issue to me because like, from, from a workflow point of view, and this is something that you, know, you would talk to different call, 911 call centers, and they all can be run differently. Some do, some don't. But there are a lot of useful things out there that are on the internet, like, um, like Bird's Eye. You know, Microsoft provides Bird's Eye. There's Google Street View. I don't have anything like those. You know, like we'll, we'll be looking at putting, getting pictometry in the future, but for the rural areas, we don't really have good um, lateral oblique imagery. I mean, you know, what I deal with, you know, we have dispatch at Smyrna, and, you know, I have to tell them, I tell, I tell them, and I was like, look, you know, you can go to Google as a reference if you don't like what you're seeing, but, you know, don't trust it. Because, I mean, you know, you have address points, that's your first thing, that's what they see in the trucks, you know. They have, they have address points, but the thing is, what happens when that, that, when that, when that isn't there? Or basically what I'm saying is, like, let's say, for example, you've got bad data. You know, at that point, the, the, the dispatcher is going to try to look for information from any resource that they can right. use. And I know this because in our call center, the, dis, the, the shift leaders each do have, there's one computer that does have Internet access. And they have gone to things to use Google Street View before or to use bird's eye. This is why I'm obsessive about not having bad data, not having any bad ranges. You're always going to have bad data, though. No. I don't think I have. I don't. I don't believe I do. Well, I guess that, that can lead into the idea of crowdsourcing versus uh, collected data. But uh, So there is a, a, a bit of a challenge there um, in the 911 center. You don't want to give anybody bad information. But in yeah. some ways, something almost right is much better than nothing at all. That's right. So that, you know, we're dealing with, we're trying to get a you know, fire truck there seven minutes. Every minute you take looking something up in the call center is a minute they're not driving a truck somewhere. That's right. It's, it's sometimes the best available is indeed the best available and don't, and if, make it as good as you can. And, the, and there's, there's a big difference between a city and a county. Um, in, in terms of what you can do, I mean, it, I mean there, you know, there is. What I can do is because of the technology that's provided me. It's not about me. I mean, that's what's technology capable. I mean, what the tools Cherokee County is giving you is a lot less than what they've given me. And that's the limitation here. That's not, that's not, that's, that's not really part of the, the, the argument because I, I, it's a bigger area. You know, Carl can probably speak from his experience that you're, you're, you're faced with covering a much bigger area, and some of those areas are less developed than they are within a city, which means that you don't have people out there as often. You know, like in, in Cherokee County, you got like really heavy, really rural areas where, you know, it's a mile between houses. Um, in those situations, that's a little bit different from collecting that data than it is from collecting it in, say, Woodstock or Smyrna. I, I definitely agree with you that at the city level you can do things you can't do at the county level because you are concentrated on a much smaller area. That's definitely true. Yeah. Um, sorry. Joe, um, have you looked at all at the U.S. National Grid? Are you familiar with that? that we talk about the common operation. Yeah, yeah. And, and 
Not not in the context of the cop. No, I, I mean I I, I I probably should. But well, it's one I of the things that, that, that USGS along with other agencies promoting as far as that common operating picture for emergency response is using the USMG on maps such as that up there for locating whatever. Um, it's being used now on the coast and the oil spill response. Most of the states along that area have adopted USMG. USGS has started to put it on the new US TOCO maps. So, and that's something that I've been talking with some people here in Georgia with GEMA and others in GISCC uh, to get training started in the state for uh, the fire departments, emergency responders, and all that. So that's something to consider mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, um, sure. I was curious, have you experimented at all with downloading um, the, the traces, the, the roads, and the trails to, G to your GPS receivers out of OpenStreetMap? Because it seemed like that would be one way if you said, I'm going to give you a tool that'll actually help you actually when you're out there see these as they updated. Well, no, I, I yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. Um, I have looked at the GPS traces some. The problem is there's just not the level of use that I'd like to have, you know, like to see. I mean, and that, that's why I'm saying that if if I can make something that's tailored towards that constituency group, you know, I feel like they'll probably use it a lot more. Right. Well, I'm saying, I'm saying, yeah, like make make the trails that's useful for them. Download it those trails on your GPS receiver so that, that is their... Yeah, oh yeah, 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 and then, yeah. And they might start actually using it and saying, well, this is actually useful for me to find it. I might actually start updating as and going to and from. So the next time they drive down that road, that's every mile. Yeah, and th this isn't really focused as much on the roads as it is on off-roads. Mm -hmm. Right. And that has its own particular set of challenges. Um, I think the reason why a lot of people haven't used it, this facility in particular, is just because of the, the dense tree cover. They don't get a good signal, you know, and then they come back and whether they're using map my ride or something else so that's why I think like the online editor might be a little bit better option and uh, because then people can say okay I know that I'm about here and some of the things that they could sketch in are particular obstacles or possibly even uploading their fo the photograph they took you know like hey this is where I broke my arm and their buddy takes a picture of them while like you know and posts it later on that 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 to me would be really interesting because uh, I think there's probably a lot of unreported injuries as well, but those unreported injuries could be useful to us because we can kind of identify some of the more dangerous parts of the trail and know that that's where we're likely to find people that are injured. Yes? So, so I mean, it's, it's in its pr most primitive stages, but have you looked at Open Trail View at all? Um, no, not Open Trail View, I haven't. I'll look at that, but no, I, I looked at, mainly I looked at, um, you know, Open Mountain Bike. Because like when I did the search originally, the one that came up, the highest on the list was Open Mountain Bike, and that was mostly, um, I think, in focus on users in Germany were using it. Right. And I and I looked at trying to download some of the GPS traces, just try to set something up, but um, you know, part of it too is, uh, you know, a question of time. I didn't haven't had as much time to put in the project as I like, but that's why one of the reasons why we're going to try to get something funded so that way we can go outside and get you know somebody to make. A customized web page um, in the next budget year, and then hopefully we can, you know, use that to learn from, and then be able to do something with the saddle club on our own. Well, thank you. Uh, next up, we have Mike Mergerski. Something about pulling data rabbits out of rabbits or something.